Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're back once again with another Amazing Science tutorial video. I'm Coach Spivey, joined with my son. Jordan Spivey. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and like and subscribe so you don't miss out on our Amazing Science tutorial videos. And also, check us out at www.fathersoninnovations.com. So for our website, you can go there and check out some more of our amazing content and material. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And in this video, we're going to be looking at writing chemical names and formulas 101. So let's do this. Let's start off with some background terminology. So an ion is an element with a positive or negative charge and the anion is the element with a negative charge. So for example, oxygen can have a negative two charge. And a cation is an element with a positive charge. So another example is gonna be calcium. And calcium can have a positive two charge. And a compound is a pure substance composed of more than one type of element that is chemically combined. So let's look at our most famous comp chemical compound. And we're looking at H2O. And our chemical formula is the symbols for identifying a compound and typically have subscripts. And subscripts tell how many atoms are in a compound. So let's look at that H2O again. And this is that chemical formula. And these subscripts, the subscript two right here tells me that there are two hydrogens and there's only one oxygen in this chemical formula. Now let's take a look at binary ionic compounds. And they're just a compound made from only two elements, a metal and a non-metal. And you need to know the oxidation number and the ionic charge in order to write the chemical formula for a binary ionic compound, which is pretty simple by looking this chart over here to the right. So if you notice, elements in this column or elements in this group have a positive one charge, which includes elements such as hydrogen, lithium, and sodium. And elements in this group have a positive two charge like beryllium, magnesium, and calcium. But let's go over here to elements in this group. So elements in this group have a negative two charge. So that's why oxygen had a negative two charge in the previous slide. And if you notice, elements in this group have a zero charge because they're noble gases. And they already have two or eight valence electrons, which makes their outermost ring stable. So let's take a look at our examples right here. So we have K, which is our potassium. And notice potassium has a plus one charge. And then we have chlorine, and chlorine has a negative one charge. So I go ahead and circle that chlorine, and I go ahead and circle that potassium. So now when we write the chemical formula, it comes out as KCl. Now the reason why it's just KCl and doesn't have any subscripts is because a positive one and a negative one cancel each other out and gives you a charge of zero. So our chemical formula is KCl or potassium chloride when we write it out. And then another example is beryllium. So beryllium has this positive two charge right here. And then oxygen, like we said before, has this negative two charge. Notice that a positive two and a negative two actually cancel each other out and gives us a charge of zero. So that's why we get the formula BEO, or when we write it out, it would be beryllium oxide for the chemical name. But what if one element has one charge and another element has another charge but the charges don't cancel each other out to zero. So let's take a look at an example of that. So beryllium right here has a plus two charge. So here's that beryllium and it's in this group right here and it has that plus two charge. But then if we look at fluorine, fluorine has that negative one charge and here's fluorine right here. So how do we get them to cancel out to zero? This means that for every one beryllium, there must be two fluorines to balance out the charges. And the chemical formula for this is BEF2 or beryllium fluoride. And remember, do not put the charges when writing your subscripts. So I'll show you an example of this. And there are two ways that we're going to write this chemical formula, go about writing it. And we have our cross method and we have our balanced charges method. Most people like using the cross method, but I always like showing people why the cross method works with our balanced charge methods. So let's take a look at this. So beryllium has a plus two charge and fluorine has a negative one charge. And just like the cross method states, we're actually going to cross our charges. So that plus two is going to come down there for fluorine, and then the negative one is going to come down for beryllium. But remember, just like I stated earlier, do not put the charges when writing your subscripts. So when I write this, this is going to end up being BEF2. Some people may be wondering, why didn't you put that one down there? Because if there's one beryllium already there, it's already understood that it's one beryllium. So that's our cross methods way. And if you notice, it's the same as this chemical formula right here. 
Now let me show you why the cross method works. So if I have a beryllium and beryllium has a plus two charge, that means that I need two fluorines to balance out that plus two charge. Why? Because a negative one and a negative one is gonna give you a negative two. So I have this beryllium with this plus two charge and it's going to cancel out with these two fluorines that have that negative one charge because a negative one and a negative one is gonna give you a negative two. So now that's why I end up having one beryllium and two fluorine. So that's why it ends up looking like BEF2. And you can also see it like this. I have this plus two right here. I have this minus two when I combine these two negative ones and that plus two and that minus two cancel each other out. And that's why we end up getting BEF2. So now let's practice a few. And you're gonna use the oxidation chart to complete and remember to use either the cross method or balanced charges method, whichever one you're most comfortable with. So I'll go ahead and help you out with the first one. So you have an example to go by. So let's look at calcium right here. And calcium has a plus two charge when I look at its group. And then if we locate fluorine on this periodic table, here's our fluorine right here. And fluorine has a negative one charge. And remember, our chemical formula has to have the charges balanced out. Well, it's pretty simple if we look at it, using that cross method, we can see that calcium has got a plus two charge, fluorine has a negative one charge, and I could take it, go right here, and I bring my charges down as subscripts, and so we end up getting CaF2. And remember, you don't put your charges in your subscripts. Go ahead and take about two minutes to knock out the following problems, and I'll come around to your desk to make sure that you're on point. You can go ahead and pause the video now. So now let's figure out how to name binary ionic compounds. Before we go any further, you're gonna to need to take out your periodic table so you can know what those element names are for the element symbols. So it's pretty simple when we name binary ionic compounds, actually. So we're gonna take two steps. First, we're gonna write the name of the first element, which is always gonna be our cation or our metal. And then second, we're gonna write the first part of our second element, but end it with the suffix IDE. And your second element is always gonna be your anion or your non-metal. So your cation is gonna come first and your anion is gonna come second. So let's look at the example right here. We have Na, which stands for sodium, and then we have F that stands for fluorine. So I go ahead and write the fluorine out. And just like our step say, we're gonna write the name of the first element. So we wrote sodium, which stands for the Na. And then we're gonna write the first part of the second element, but end it with the suffix IDE. So notice we wrote the first part of fluorine, but then we took this INE out and put an IDE at the end. And that's it, you're done. So our binary ionic compound name for NAF is actually gonna be sodium fluoride. So let's go ahead and practice a few. I'll go ahead and start off with the first one, just to give you an example of what to do. So this CA stands for calcium. So I'm going to write the name of the first element. And then our second element is oxygen. But instead of writing oxygen, I'm gonna write an OX. And then I'm gonna take the last part of it off and I'm gonna put an IDE. And that's it, we're done. That's calcium oxide. So now I'm going to take about a minute or so to write out the binary ionic compound names for these form following chemical formulas. And I'll go ahead and give you that minute now so you can go ahead and pause the video now. But what about those troublesome transition metals? And most transition metals can form more than one type of ion. So they can form a plus one or a plus two or plus three. But it's easy to tell because the name of the ion will contain a Roman numeral to indicate the charge of the ion. So for example, let's look at copper. And copper can have a plus one or a plus two charge. And if we look at it right here on the chart, there's a plus one and there's a plus two. But how can we tell? If we can tell because it will be written like this. So here's a copper with that one Roman numeral. So that lets us know there's a plus one or that one plus. And then if we look at right here, here's a copper with those two Roman numerals. So here's that two plus. And then if we look on this chart right here, so here's a plus by itself. Notice it doesn't have to have a one in front of it because one plus automatically lets us know it's one. And then here's that two plus. So now let's go ahead and take a look at iron. So if you notice, iron has this two right here, and the way we can tell 
that it has a plus two charge. We can look right here, that plus two, and we can look right here. And then here's the iron, and it has a plus three or that three plus charge, and we can see it right here. So it's pretty easy to read the charges on our transition metals. Let's practice writing chemical names and chemical formulas with transition metals. And I'll go ahead and knock out the first one so you can have a guideline and an example to go by. So let's take a look at this one. We have manganese and it's got one, two, three. So that lets us know manganese has that plus three charge. And then we look at oxygen. If we look at this chart right here, oxygen has a negative two charge. So let's go ahead and use our cross method. So we have that plus three, oxygen's got that negative two. We cross those charges. And then when we rewrite it, our chemical formula is Mn2O3. And our chemical name is going to be manganese. And we always write the initial charge that that transition metal has. So we have that manganese with this plus three right here. And then we have this oxygen, but remember it's going to be manganese oxide. And that's going to be our chemical name. Now ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and take about two minutes to write the chemical charges for these elements and then the chemical formula and chemical names. And you can go ahead and pause the video now as I walk around from desk to desk to make sure you're grinding and on point. Now onto binary covalent compounds. And these are made when two nonmetal atoms bond by sharing electrons. And their writing those are the same as with binary ionic compounds, but the elements names are also include a prefix that shows the number of atoms of the elements in each molecule. And just like with ionic compounds, the second element ends with IDE. So let's practice. So now right here we have phosphorus that has a negative three charge when we look at the chart. And then we have oxygen which has a negative two charge when we look at the chart. So we use our cross method. We know this phosphorus, we cross it with a negative three and the oxygen negative two. So our chemical formula ends up being P2O3. Now when we write our chemical name, we go ahead and locate the, the subscript on the chart. So here's that two for that P2. So now when we write it, we're gonna put that prefix in front. So it's gonna end up being diphosphorus for that first element. And remember, we write the first element as normal. And then for that second element, we have a three right here for the subscript. So the prefix for that three is tri. So it's gonna be diphosphorus trioxide. Cause remember we put an IDE at the end of the second element. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That's all you have to do to name binary covalent compounds. Now let's practice naming and writing chemical formulas for binary covalent compounds using the oxidation and prefix charts to the right. So I'll go ahead and start us off with that first one. So looking at that top chart, nitrogen has a negative three charge and bromine has a negative one charge. If we cross our charges, our chemical formula ends up being NBr3. So that means our chemical name is going to be nitrogen tribromide. So ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and take five minutes to write, do this all together, and then put the name of the compound for this group, and then the chemical formula for this group. And you can go ahead and pause the video now as I come around and make sure that you're on point. Now it's time for our final check for understanding. And you're going to use your oxidation and prefix chart to answer the following. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Coach Fiverr, son of my son, Jordan Fiverr, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. And make sure that you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on our amazing science videos. And also check us out at FatherSonInnovations.com so you can access more of our content and materials. And like I always say, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you have a wonderful, awesome, positive day. Peace.